under, at the under 15 mark, 16-0 lead. I know, obviously, you wanted a quick start after the Central game, but what went into that? Energy and rebounding, what were the key ingredients to get off to such a great start? Well, the energy was a big reason why uh, we got to a good start uh, on both ends of the floor. Uh, our guys are really in tune to uh, getting out defensively and being disruptive. Uh, they're very in tune to limiting our opponents to one-shot opportunities because the last game, uh, we were giving up 17 offensive rebounds to Central Michigan. Uh, getting an opportunity to watch it on film uh, in practice really uh, was revealing as far as what we need to do and how we need to correct some of those uh, physicality areas that we did not respond to versus Central Michigan. So today it was lovely just to see the team responding to uh, being the most you know, dialed in, being physical, uh, doing it without fouling, at the same time bringing the effort. Hey, Juana, Tom mentioned to us that Hunter passed you for double-doubles uh, career at Michigan. What's it like kind of coaching this next generation of Michigan players and hearing that they are passing you on the stat sheet and the, and the record books now? Yeah, it's beautiful, man, to, to hear that. Uh, Hunter, you know, getting an opportunity to continue to do really good things out there on the floor, um, team-wise and then also individually. Uh, with the work that he's put in, I'm not surprised. As the year continued to uh, develop uh, with the amount of games that we have left, I said to him, continue to keep breaking records, but make sure you do it with a victory. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he got a good, good kick out of that, but his teammates uh, did a nice job of celebrating you know, Hunter's uh, individual success. But Hunter's always been a guy who's all about team first. Uh, he's never been a guy that uh, tried to just do it with stats. When Hunter, Terrence, and Doug kind of spoke to us here, uh, they mentioned there was a team meeting uh, beforehand between Central and now. I'm curious, did you hear about that team meeting, and, and maybe what did you hear? I only knew about the team meeting because you know I had reached out to Terrence Williams Jr. to uh, come in my office and watch some film, and uh, he told me that, hey, Coach, um, I, I can't make it right at this moment. We're going to have a team meeting. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was great to, to hear that you know guys are – doing it but where it's player driven and it's not coach driven and it's nice to see that the maturity of guys trying to find solutions within um, which is you know when you hear as a coach and then also as a former player and now coaching I've uh, been a part of some of those team meetings and some of those team meetings can be some BS because uh, guys are afraid to speak up and say uh, real things to one another but um, what I was told after we had our team meeting film session practice, that guys uh, were honest, being real, and that right there uh, has a response, a carryover, and we saw the carryover today. Did you want, I guess, building off that, did you notice a difference in the players, maybe their approach or demeanor over these past few days? Oh yes, oh yes. When you get punched in the mouth, and the way how we lost versus Central Michigan, it was built on physicality, 17 offensive rebounds, uh, how they scored in the paint, uh, how they beat us up on the glass. Um, I saw a, a different type of group uh, on Friday and also on Saturday in practice. And um, you know, I love that. I watched it on film and saw it on practice. And, and that just, you know, when you have a, a team that come in with a solution base, and there are going to be some good things that will happen. Now, it's easy to say that after a win, but if we would have lost the game and we would have played hard, I still would have came in and said, I love how our team competed. And then what did you make of the defense? I think first half against tied program record, only going 15 points. What did you make of the defense? Yeah, I heard that today. And I'm not so in tune to a lot of these records and stuff like that. I just be so dialed in to the opponent and game prepping on the opponent and how we can you know, be prepared to compete. And uh, post game, I was told that it was a record uh, in the first half. Uh, and, and what was, I can't even tell you what, 14 points they scored in the first half? 13. 13. 13. 13. Um, I just like to see us do that again. <laughs> no, I can't promise you, but I can just say this we're going to play hard. I, I guess, how do you uh, get those kind of, kinds of performances out of your team on a, a nightly basis going forward now that you know that you guys It's tough. It's tough. It's hard, you know. The, the, uh, to play 
a perfect game. I said we played a perfect game today. Uh, it's not easy to win in the Big Ten. It's not. And we're going to you know, get a lot of teams best. And right now we're going to enjoy this win and uh, we'll look for practice tomorrow. Juwan, I didn't realize that Isaiah Barnes had quite that leaping ability. I saw a couple worries of that. And Will Cheddar, can you talk about those two kids and what you think they could contribute to this team depth-wise? Yes, they both uh, have been great for this team uh, with their energy, with their attitude, with their work ethic. You see how the, their teammates respond to when they go out there competing. Uh, they're going to uh, be, be great. Year after year, they're going to continue to keep, keep getting better. And, um, I'm just happy they're on our side. So, John, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Hunter single handedly was outscoring Maryland at halftime 18 13. I guess, Joel, he was single handedly outscoring Maryland 18 13 at halftime. Through all your years, have you ever seen anything like that? Just one player outscoring an entire other team? Um, yes, I have. Uh, Big Shaq, David Robson. <laughs> You know, I've, I've watched a lot of college basketball growing up. Uh, but you know what? Like I said before, Hunter's not into the stats. Uh, he had a good game today. But, um, you know, it's about now getting healthy, get some rest, get some food in our system, uh, and then be ready for practice tomorrow. But they also uh, have a few days off of school until classes start when? Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> be on class from time Wednesday. <laughs> Anything else? Juwan, I mean, guard play is so critical in this league. I guess, what do you make of the strides that you've seen from Doug and Kobe, specifically Kobe, um, defensive end of the floor? Well, Kobe's been working hard, like I said, since the summer. Uh, you know, you got, you know, a little bit of experience last year, uh, not maybe more than what he probably wanted, uh, but he understood the process. And uh, when you have a, a guy who's so dialed in and being all in, and also a guy who is in love with the game of basketball, that uh, there's going to be a lot of good things that you're going to see uh, throughout his years here at Michigan. Doug, um, freshman, I told you guys in the beginning um, that you know, the Michigan fans are really going to embrace watching Doug compete because he's a competitor. Uh, yes, he's a freshman. He's going to make freshman mistakes. It's a part of it. Uh, but I love how he's responded when Jalen went down. Uh, he's accepted the responsibility of being the quarterback of our team and he's growing and, and getting better and better by game and uh, you know he's accepted of you know, quarterbacking us throughout the season. Take one last one. Uh, we didn't get to ask this last week because of uh, the circumstances overall in Central but uh, Kim Barnes Rico got her 500th win in her career as a coach. Um, I know you've spoken about your relationship with her and the two programs intermingling. Um, but what, what does to get 500 wins? What do you think that means, both for her and you watching her lead that program? Well, I'm sure it, it means a lot to her. You know, she worked hard uh, throughout her coaching career, um, and I'm sure she has been very. Thankful for uh, the coaches that have worked with her, um, whether it's in here or at St. John's. Uh, also, the players that have put in the work uh, in practice and also in game. Uh, you know, coaches all you know you're only good as your players, and uh, and that's of course with the buy-in and the development part of it that she has been so you know elite. She's been elite level with because I've had a chance to watch them in practice. And see some of her practices, and and, uh, and see the teaching that's happening and developing that's going on uh, with her program. And so, uh, I'm not surprised. I'm sure there's going to be 500 more, depending on if she wants to continue to keep coaching. Uh, as long as as long as it's going to take to get 500 more, but I would not be surprised she won another 500 wins. Uh, it's just great to see the program on how it's been consistently uh, special. Since the time that I've been here uh, as a head coach at the University of Michigan. Okay, coach, thank you. Congrats.